Hi everyone, I'm Carl with Apt. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of products that have gotten to be extremely popular accessories with all these new TVs. The Bose Soundbar ST300SB and the Sonos Playbar, which are, in my opinion, two of the best options out there for sound at this price point. They're both $699. They have a ton of features built in that'll both enhance your listening experience and give you the ability to create a surround system, all without having to run wires all over the place. We've had a lot of people ask that we do a side-by-side -side rundown on these two specifically, so here we go. We'll start off with the looks. The Sonos is about three and a quarter inches high, 35 and a half inches wide, and about five and a half inches deep. It has a durable cloth covering over the front drivers and a high quality perforated metal grill over the drivers on the sides. You'll also see a gray strip along the bottom of the speaker and the same gray finish along the back. On the right side, as you're facing the speaker, there's gonna be two buttons, one to control the volume and one to play and pause. These are also used to establish a connection with your smart devices. On the back of the play bar, you'll find two ethernet ports, an optical connection and a power connection. Under the speaker, you're gonna see a rubber rim that's designed to keep the sound bar in place when it's sitting on a flat surface, but it'll also prevent it from vibrating if it's wall mounted. Just be sure to remember if you're wall mounting this speaker, you'll need the play bar mount accessory. There's a little infrared eye at the front right corner that'll pick up your TV's remote signals, and there's also a repeater on the back in case the play bar is covering the infrared input on your TV. Now let's move on to the Bose. The SoundTouch 300 is two and a quarter inches high, 38 and a half inches wide, and four and a quarter inches deep. The top of the speaker is a single piece of premium glass, and the front and sides are wrapped in a single piece of extruded aluminum. Towards the top left and front of the speaker, there's gonna be some indicator lights to let you know extra details. There's a Wi-Fi indicator, a TV indicator that'll tell you when the dialog mode is enabled, and indicators for sound touch, Bluetooth connectivity to other system components like a subwoofer or wireless rear speakers. On the back of the speaker, you'll find all the connections. There's an HDMI output with an audio return channel, uh, an HDMI and optical input as well. You'll also find an ethernet port and connections for their Adapt IQ setup and a hardwire connection for their base module if you choose to hardwire that. There's also a micro USB port for service on the speaker. Like the play bar though, you're gonna need an accessory kit if you're looking to mount this on the wall. Sound good so far? If you like what you've seen and you wanna pick one of these up, make sure to click on the links in the description below or this little eye up here in the corner. We have free shipping on these two sound bars all year long. Next category that these both excel in is features. And here's where these two really set themselves apart from other soundbars, at least in my opinion. They both consolidate a lot of useful functionality into an easy to use app interface. You'll have access to all the content saved on your network and smart device, along with several different internet radio stations, including Pandora, Spotify, and Deezer. The Bose also gives you Bluetooth connectivity. They both have simple setups for your favorite listening stations as well. So you have these different favorite buttons that you can click on. It's set up a little bit differently on each, but you'll see what we're talking about. Another great feature these units share is their ability to act as standalone products or be integrated into a system of speakers. These both have the option to act as the center, left, and right channel of a surround sound system when you add their optional rear channels and subwoofers. The Bose allows you to add their virtually invisible surround speakers, and Sonos has two options that can act as surrounds. You can get either the Play 1 or the Play 3. There's also an optional subwoofer that you can add for either one of these. So for someone looking to put together a system over time, these soundbars are an excellent starting point. They can both also be integrated into an entire home audio system by adding compatible speakers and both also come with ways to calibrate their sound. The Bose uses their Adapt IQ to adjust settings and the Sonos uses TruePlay tuning to get you the best sound quality that these speakers are capable of. Please keep in mind though that the TruePlay tuning is unfortunately only available on the iOS operating system. So if you have an Android, uh, you're a little bit out of luck, but the speaker still sounds great, I promise. Lastly, let's talk about what makes these both sound so good, the speakers themselves. Sonos has six mid-range speakers and three tweeters producing their sound, and I'd love to tell you about the Bose, but unfortunately they don't give us any information on that front. What I can tell you though is that they use quiet port technology to improve bass response without creating distortion, and there are tweeters built in. How many though, I'm not sure. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either of these speakers. So if you're someone who's looking to add to your entertainment experience, you'll definitely want to check these out. You will not be disappointed. And don't forget that you can build a system for these piece by piece so you don't have to spend all your hard-earned money in one shot. So have any of you heard either of these? Have you heard both of them? What's your preference? Let us know in the comments section. And as always, thank you for watching our video and make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube to see what we have next.